It's a very good evening right here in the heart of Nairobi CBD. You've made it right on time for Metropole's Markets today, where we discuss the latest price actions in the market with the in-depth analysis. My name is Nina Shivan. We start by taking a look at the results from today's closing bell at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. All right, and we start by taking a look at the top gainers this um, at the close of this afternoon, and we start off with Nairobi Business Ventures. This is Gems, who had a rise of uh, 4.21%. Long on Kenya Limited had a rise of 4.29%. Samir Africa had a rise of 4.76%. Sunlum, so a rise of 5.26%. And BOC Kenya, so a rise of 9.68%. All right, and taking a look at the top losers at the close of the NSC today, Total Kenya Limited had a drop of 6.9%. Stanley Fahari Income had a drop of 5.79%. Richemi Supermarket Limited had a drop of 5.26%. The Standard Group Limited had a drop of 5%. And T, uh, TPS East Africa, Serena Limited, had a drop of All right, now a new survey by Stand by Kenya has shown that business activity and employment by Kenya's private sector declined in April, marking the first time in 17 months that business conditions have deteriorated in Kenya. Now, according to the survey, the headline purchasing managing index PMI slipped below the neutral 50.0 um, threshold to post of 49.3 points in April from 51 points in March, denoting a contraction in business activity. It was also the fourth successive drop in the index, according to the survey weakness around, a, uh, around the output and new orders forced farms to reduce employment slightly in April, the first fall in job numbers since late 2017. Now, the cash flow issues were also noted by many firms reporting falling um, new orders in April. The release of the survey's findings comes barely a fortnight after the government announced that Kenya's economy grew by 6.3%. Now, diaspora remittances, on the other hand, um, the diaspora remittances, on the other hand, have reason by 11.4 percent to 221 US million dollars. All right, now to just give more information, data by the Central Bank of Kenya indicates that the 12-month cumulative inflows increased by 26% to 272 billion shillings in March from 215 Point eight six billion shillings in March 2018. North America remained the main source of region for the remittances, accounting for 53% of remittances to Kenya in March. And um, we shall be discussing that in, in depth in just a bit. Now, taking a look at what is going on with coffee, the average price of a 50 kilogram bag of Kenyan coffee fell by nearly a quarter 24.49 percent to 174.41 US dollars equivalent to 17,683 shillings during the month of April. The data from the Nairobi Coffee Exchange indicates that the value of coffee traded during that period subsequently dropped by 23.42% to about 9 billion shillings in April 2019 compared to 11.8 billion shillings in April 2018. However, the volume of coffee traded through the exchange increased marginally by 1.42% to 25.6 tons in April this year from 25.3 tons in April last year. Now, the Nairobi Coffee Exchange has des um, described April as one of the hardest months in the coffee business as it was during the same month that coffee prices at the International Coffee Exchange in New York hit a 13-year 
year low of 90 US cents per pound. Uh, Kenyan shilling performance and we'll be looking at that in just a bit. All right, now the Kenyan shilling was farm against the dollar on Monday and helped by dollars inflows from remittances that met demand from the merchandise and oil importers traders have told Reuters. Now earlier today, commercial banks quartered the shilling at 100 shillings and 90 cents, buying 101 shillings as uh, selling um, per dollar compared to 101 shillings buying and 101 shillings and 10 cents selling at Friday's close. Let's take a look at the forex. Let's take a look at what's going on with euro bonds. Yields on Kenya's five-year, 10-year and 30-year euro bonds declined last month. According to the Central Bank of Kenya, the yield on the 10-year euro bond that is maturing in 2024 fell to 6.4% at the end of April. The decline in the yields on Kenya's euro bonds also coincided with the fall in yields on Ghana's and Angola's 10-year euro bonds. Kenya's biggest lender by the assets, KCB Group, plans to buy a bank in Rwanda and one in the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, its chief executive said. According to Reuters, KCB Group CEO Joshua Oigara, who was speaking to reporters late on Friday, did not reveal the identity of the two banks the lender is considering acquiring or the time frame. KCB is also planning to open a representative office in China to take advantage of the growing trade links between East Africa and China. He said Kenyan, uh, Kenyan banks have announced several deals since the government copped the commercial lending rates in 2016, crimping their profit margins and forcing them to look for survival strategies, including consolidation. Now, last month, KCB offered to buy uh, the National Bank of Kenya, NBK, in a swap of one KCB share for 10 NBK shares in a deal seen helping NBK out of its perennial liquidity challenges. CBA Group, a uh, uh, privately held bank, is the is in the process of merging with NIC Bank to form the third biggest bank by assets in East Africa. The second largest bank by assets, Equity Group, said last week it was in talks with London-listed financial services firm Atlas Mara Limited about acquiring stakes in banks in Rwanda, Zambia, Mozambique and Tanzania. All right, now, and taking a look at international news, Shanghai plunged uh, more than 5% with the Chinese yuan also taking a battering after U.S. President Donald Trump threw a spanner into the high-level negotiations, which many observers were expecting to wrap up 
imminently. Sorry, for ten months. China has been paying tariffs to the USA of 25% on the $50 billion of high-tech and 10% on $200 billion of other goods, Trump tweeted on Sunday night. The 10% will go up to 25% on Friday. He added the trade deal with China continues to but um, too slowly as they attempt to renegotiate a no. The warning will throw a shadow over the next round of talks ahead of a visit by the Chinese delegation to Washington this week. However, while a number of news outlets reported that China was considering delaying or cancelling the meeting, a foreign ministry spokesman said a delegation would head to the U.S. as planned. The two sides have imposed tariffs on a $360 billion in two-way trade since last year, but Trump and China's um, Xi Jinping um, agreed a truce in December, fueling a global stock surge for the past four months. All right, now Europe's main stock markets plunged by more than 2% on Monday after U.S. President Donald Trump said he would raise tariffs on imports from China at the end of the week, dealing a blow to hopes of an imminent end to their trade war. Frankfurt's DAX uh, 30 lost 2.1% to heat 12,145.37 points at um, 8.55 GMT, and while the Paris Kark dived, uh, more than 2.2 percent to 5,425.36. London's benchmark um, 100 index was closed for a bank holiday. Now, after months of relatively calm U.S.-China trade talks had buoyed uh, the markets, Trump set the world's indices pl plummeting by vowing to increase tires from 10 percent to 25 percent. And with that, we'd like to take a very quick break. And we shall be back with more by leaving we the, the daily commodities. Just to analyze the stocks and the current business news that is uh, making headlines, with me in studio is Martin Murigi, a senior associate research from Standard Investment Bank. A very good evening to you, Martin. Good evening. Thank you for joining us once again. I told you you'd become a frequent visitor. But anyway, I'd like us to quickly go through the, um, the stocks today. And I'll start off by reading the losers and gainers at the close of Nairobi Securities Exchange at 3 p.m. today. Um, leading losers at Total Kenya, who had a drop down by 6.9%, Chumi had a drop down by 5.3%, Standard Group 
a drop of 5%, Serena a drop of 4.5% and Umeme a drop of 4.1%. Now the leading gainers on the other hand were BOC who had a gain of 9.7%, Sunlam Kenya a gain of 5.3%, Samir Africa a gain of 4.8%, Longhorn, Afri um, Longhorn sorry, a gain of 4.3% and Nairobi Business Ventures so a gain of 4.2%. Percent now, Martin. Let's start off by just uh, taking a look at uh, roughly taking a look at the the whole trading at the NSE today. Um, what are you reading from it? Um, today, the the volumes, the turnover is a bit slightly low, mm -hmm. three twenty million. Mm -hmm. In cash terms, it's around three point two million dollars. Um, participation is mostly skewed as is usually the case to its foreign investors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Foreign has accounted technically around 60% of total turnover, mm -hmm. um, with um, uh, being active on both uh, the large caps, that is your equity bank, Safaricom. Mm. Mm, yeah. Which I was going to mention in just a bit ahead. Huh? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the market today, uh, due to the performance of Safaricom, EABL, and Equity Bank, is still quite uh, a dip in the indices, mm. with uh, the NASI dipping quite a bit, quite a lot by one point, I think 1.5%, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong. Yes. All right, uh, let me just quickly bring our viewers up to speed when it comes to the top movers. We have Equity Bank. Um, pr the price was going at 41 shillings and 15 cents. All right, uh, Safaricom, uh, 28 shillings and 65 cents. KCB was also a, to a top mover at 41 shillings and 30 cents. Bamburi, we also have Bamburi, EABL, instead of going through w one by one, and uh, WPP is Khan Group. Now, looking at last week's action, what would you say the investors should be looking for this week? Um, this week, actually, with most of the earning, uh, earnings season as supposed to, banks earning season, that is Q1, we'll start mm -hmm. seeing trickling of uh, Q1 numbers from mid-May to end of May. Mm -hmm. So you'll see quite a bit of banking activity around banks, uh, around, of, uh, around market activity around banks. Mm -hmm. But uh, from our side, we are not that bullish on bank stocks. Mm -hmm. Reason being that um, Q last year's results were for lack of a better word, massaged by day one, what we call day one FRS9 mm. adjustment. I don't want to go to the technicals, mm -hmm. but you'll actually notice quite uh, a, a bit of a depression in earnings vis-a-vis -vis last year. So going forward, these um, foreigners will still be, who have been net buyers, will see quite um, the activity still picking up. Um, especially with the Fed keeping it straight, mm -hmm. uh, flat, uh, which is good for frontier and emerging markets. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, locals, locals actually have been selling, uh, funny enough. Uh, we've seen activity from locals have been mostly selling this mm -hmm. year, yeah, which mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why the market is a bit not exuberant as we expected it to mm -hmm. be, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. And um, <coughs> what factors may have ascribed um, the losers and the gainers or even the top movers to be where they are right now? Actually, if you check out the top movers, um, EABL is your biggest um, laggard, around down 3.2%. Yes. So one of the reasons we speculate why EABL could be, could be taking a hit is purely because of uh, the drought. Uh, drought actually affects their value segment of the market. That is, mm -hmm. your Senator Keg, uh, uh, more specifically to be precise. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice that investors will be have a cautious view of how their second half and second half earnings being now their full year earnings, mm. their, f their full year ends in June, how the numbers look, look like. But you'll probably see a proper big hit come mm -hmm. uh, second, um, second, the second financial year, that mm -hmm. is FY19, FY20, yes. All right. So you get uh, quite a hit, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you, Martin. Um, Unless you have anything else to bring us up to speed on when it comes to Marta stocks, I'd like us to move on. Uh, no problem. Mm -hmm. oh, there is, um, Safaricom took a retracement, 2.1%, mm -hmm. uh, following last week, uh, Friday's 1% decline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. We could attribute that to some profit-taking elements because of last, year's, uh, last week's uh, bit of rally mm -hmm. and then of lack of 
excitement, if I can say so. There was lack of excitement. Yeah, having <laughs> there's there's already the earnings the earnings are already out. Uh -huh. Probably now we'll see a bit of excitement towards the tail end of mm. when the the dividend book closure is coming to, to fruition. Yes, we should see a bit of uh, activity on that front because now uh, um, investors are trying to book in the quite good dividend payout yeah, right. released by the firm, yes. All right. All right. Well, thank you for that. Now, um, I'd like us to move on to one of the stories that uh, we're making headlines in our news today now. Now, at moving away from stocks, yes, data from the central bank has indicated that the funds being sent from abroad have risen to a high of 272 billion shillings in March 2019. And as compared to March 2018, that stood at 215.6 billion shillings. Um, this is clearly an increment. And just to be specific, it's an increment of 26%. So from where you sit, what are your sentiments on this? This is a very good, interesting question because um, last year, we, uh, after you started noticing a spike in year-on-year -year comparison mm -hmm. in um, foreign inflows, month on month, we contacted CBK to get a color, better color of mm -hmm. what exactly is mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. They don't have quite a conclusive answer mm -hmm. of what exactly could be driving that, mm -hmm. but we speculate that, of course, one of the biggest source markets is uh, North America, US to be precise. Yes. So with the US economy doing great, um, we should be, uh, it's basically a ripple effect of what exactly is happening in mm. your global markets. Um, the same thing with um, these better remittance channels mm. and uh, better marketing of um, uh, Kenyan products, mm. uh, that is investment products to the diaspora. Mm. So those are some of the contributing factors. Last year, of course, there was a tax am amnesty issue that was uh, played a role. We don't know how big of a role that was. Mm -hmm. uh, we're waiting for official st statistics on that. But uh, aside from that, CBK is still a bit uh, gray on what exactly is... They're not really saying what's going on. They really don't have concrete. They're still doing research and knowing what exactly is this, this spike because it's quite big spikes. And, and yeah, it is quite a big spike. 26% yeah. is a large number. Now, what implications may this 26% spike have on the shilling dollar relationship? FDI is our number one, FDI I mean foreign direct, uh, uh, not foreign, foreign remittances, mm -hmm. let me use that better word. Foreign remittances is our highest uh, hard currency under right now. Mm -hmm. Last year we pocketed north of uh, two point, can't remember my number, the number of head, mm -hmm. but it, was a, it is our biggest foreign uh, exchange honor. Mm -hmm. So it's supporting the, the, the Kenya shilling, the CAS, it's absolutely uh, important right now. Seeing how coffee is doing, tea will take a hit this year mm -hmm. because of drought. Coffee is taking a hit because of uh, the global prices coming down because of Brazil. Brazil uh, is the biggest producer mm -hmm. of uh, Arabica coffee, so they had a bumper harvest. We're going to get to coffee, but <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're already letting the cat out of uh, the bag okay, now. Okay, cool, <laughs> cool, cool. So, okay. Yeah. Um, just to finish up with this uh, diaspora, says because clearly he really wants to talk about coffee. <laughs> What is the best way that the government can use this this spike of 26%, this diaspora remittances, to better the economy? I think we can look at the other way around. We can think of it of how do we incentivize the, um, the diaspora to invest more, send more cash mm -hmm. to, the, to the local Kenya economy? Mm -hmm. Is it more tax incentives? Uh, but uh, um, actually tax incentives, that is what I can, can think of at the moment. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's something else uh, listeners need to be also cautious of. If something goes ahead and happens, by something I mean in case there's a recession, like what is exactly being um, talked about that might hit the global economy towards next year, mm -hmm. uh, will actually have an impact on the foreign direct. Uh, invest, uh, remittances. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if your Wanjiko in US is having a credit crunch, how will, he, how will she be able to send back yeah. cash back yeah. to the local economy? Yeah. So it's uh, there's a pretty a lot of dynamics to at play when uh, the foreign direct uh, foreign remittances is at uh, is uh, a focal point. Yeah. All right. Moving on swiftly, let's take a look at the euro bond. Yeah. Okay. Not the fact that 
Kenya is supposed to go and get more money, relax. But um, the yields on Kenya's 5, 10 and 30 year euro bonds that declined last month. And the same case applies to Ghana and Angola. So they also have seen a decline in yields in their um, 10 year euro bonds. Uh, what exactly could be happening here? It's all about uh, how are the global, how is the global market viewing um, the sovereign bonds? Mm -hmm. uh, are they viewing them in a risky perspective? For instance, if the currency, if the currency of, uh, if our local currency takes a hit, there's no doubt our sovereign, uh, the yields will definitely spike. Mm -hmm. If there's a risky element in any of the markets, mm -hmm. the yields will definitely go up. Mm -hmm. um, so to interpret that data, that shows you that at the, end, uh, the global economy, the global markets are viewing, the way they're declining, they're viewing that they are, the markets are actually becoming less risky as they were mm -hmm. previously. Mm -hmm. If you notice, there was, uh, when there was a spike uh, in both emerging and frontier, when the Turkish Lira and uh, Argentinian Peso took a hit, mm -hmm. a lot of yields in, the, in frontier and emerging markets actually uh, escalated. Mm -hmm. So that, that shows you that there's a risky, the investors are viewing these instruments as risky. So it's all about the investor. It's all about the it investor. It has got nothing to do with the borrower. So it, it doesn't mean that we are borrowing cheap. We have already borrowed. <laughs> the beauty about it right now is that, to, to bring it to context, mm -hmm. June you're hitting the market yeah. with $2.5 billion uh, euro bond. Mm -hmm. If the yields are coming lower, that's good news for us because mm. that means we'll borrow, we'll borrow at a cheaper rate. So this means we are going to borrow cheap. We are going to borrow cheap mm. with the yields coming lower. If the yields are spiking, Rotich will be having sleepless nights. Yes. Coffee. <laughs> Yes. And before we talk about coffee, <laughs> allow me to take a quick break and allow um, Martin to have a glass of water and we shall be back with more. Welcome back. You're still watching Markets Today right here on Metropole TV. My name is Nina Shoban, as always, and I'm seated with Martin, who's bringing us up to speed on Mata stocks and everything that is affecting the world of business. And at this point, before we went on a break, we wanted to talk about the coffee industry. Now, Martin, let's quickly look at coffee. Yeah? According to the international markets, coffee has been on a decline but has just hit its lowest in 13 years, and that's a very long time. So from where you sit, what exactly is causing this fall? Brazil. Brazil <laughs> is the biggest uh, exporter of coffee globally. So they had a bumper harvest. So if uh, that has an effect on your, um, uh, my father, who's also a coffee farmer, mm -hmm. uh, it has an effect on everybody, um, globally that is. Mm -hmm. So, but in 2019, 2020, it looks better because um, uh, Brazil actually um, does a bi biannual um, how can I put it? <laughs> By annual um, planting season, you can use it right. So they, they skip a year and then do the next year. So you'll see from projections is that next year we'll have a decline of around eight point three percent. So that should um, that should actually go ahead and support our local coffee. Uh, farmers and the global prices. So yes. the life of our local coffee farmers in the, is in the hands of the Brazilian farmers? Ab absolutely. It's the same thing with tea. Okay, the good thing we are one of the largest producers of tea, mm -hmm. but the problem we have with us with tea is that now there's drought, so our life is on the hands of the weatherman. Yes. All right, mm. all right. Mm. Away from coffee, business is deteriorating. Now, a new survey has shown that business activity and employment by Kenya's private sector declined in April, um, marking the first time in 17 months that business conditions have deteriorated in Kenya. In layman's terms, kindly unpack the survey for us. Okay. Um, from their survey done by Stanbic, they went ahead and checked um, what they call the Purchasing Managers Index. Um, one of the things they checked is that demand, the demand side, demand side being people who go ahead and buy the goods and services, uh, the producers or the managers are not uh, necessary. They're not increasing their prices. Mm -hmm. In that, um, it's sure it's 
basically it shows that people are no longer don't have that cash flow to go ahead and buy the goods and services if the price if the increment in prices is done in tandem as mm. the current inflation rate is going up mm. so actually the pmi points out that the cash flow issue is one of the biggest problems uh, being the biggest culprit being the government mm -hmm, both mm -hmm. county and national governments and I can tie also that, I being a banking analyst, mm -hmm. um, I can tie that to the non-performing loans because most of the management, we talk to bank management, they basically tie it back to uh, most of the NPLs being government, delayed government payments, which is basically hitting the private sector mm -hmm. hard, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And also there's a concern about weather because now inflation is starting to tick up, food inflation, uh, mm -hmm. we're already at 6.6%, mm -hmm. so food inflation is already ticking up, which it will escalate further, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Fuel inflation, no doubt, mm -hmm. right now, pump prices come 14th of this month, expect our... Car owners are definitely suffering. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. Now, the private sector was also mentioned. What role do they play in this? In? In um, the business deteriorating. Th that's why I was, I was... They play the role in that. If, if, they can't, if they can't go ahead and... If there's an increment in the prices, because it points out if th there's an increment in input prices, but mm -hmm. on the demand side, on the output side, it mm -hmm. was flat, mm -hmm. showing you that they're unable to go ahead and pass over the incremental fee or the incremental charge in their production to the consumer. Mm -hmm. That shows you there's a lower demand driven, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lower demand driven um, demand side, if I can use it. Another interesting element Kenyans, your viewers can be looking at is what you call co-inflation, non-food, non-food, uh, non non-fuel inflation. So month on month, this has actually been lower than 5%. Mm -hmm. It shows you that the demand driven, whereby now it's, it's all about demand pressures have been muted, pretty much muted for quite a while. It's mm -hmm. been oscillating around 4, 3%, 4, 3%. That shows you that the demand side of the economy is not doing, is not as strong as should be as yeah. strong as it should be so what yeah. is the best way forward as we shut down this interview um government to make payments because it's it's uh but there, somebody will ask me where is the money <laughs> yeah i was gonna ask you so <laughs> where, where, is the money? where is the money you're giving us uh, i'm asking for a solution you're giving me another problem <laughs> yeah where's the money uh it's uh it's a pandora's box let me use it at, at the moment um because if if the government releases money, trust me, it's 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 such a cyclical um, cyclical environment. Mm -hmm. Because if I get money, if I'm paid, I'm able to go ahead and buy something from this client, and mm. this client buy something from that client. So right now we have an economy more or less that that tying up of cash, non-payment of um, non-payment of government. Um, then payment to government contractors mm. is actually playing uh, quite uh, stressful. Stressful is not the word. Uh, a tightening a, role. A tightening role. Yeah. yeah. All right. The economy, yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Martin. Okay. That was a very insightful <coughs> interview. We've taken a look at so many stories and uh, we had some de in depth analysis. Um, so I'd like us to shut down this episode of Markets Today this Monday evening. My name is Nina Shibana. I'll be seeing you at 7 p.m. with um, more news and I leave you with agro-commodities. <laughs>